Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next episode in the Coding a 2D Game Engine in Java series. In the last episode, what we got done was we added turtles to the game. So now, <laughs> if I can jump on him, we can add turtles to the game and they behave the way you would expect a turtle to in Mario where we can jump on the shell and it keeps going back and forth until we stomp on it again or we die. So in this episode, we're going to be implementing one of the last features, which is the flagpole, which works very simply. All it is is a flagpole and when Mario hits it, he wins. That's what triggers the win animation. So to add it to the game is actually pretty simple. We'll first of all start off inside of our level editor scene initializer so that we can add a button for the flagpole just like we do with all of our other prefabs. So I'm just going to go below where we have our turtle in this code and we're going to say that the sprite is going to be items.getSprite6 which is the flag top. And then we'll have a different prefab for the flagpole. We'll say the ID is sprite.getTextID. And it's basically going to be all this stuff again, which once again, we should abstract that into a function for sure. And I would highly recommend you do so, even though I'm not doing that. And then right here, we're simply going to say, instead of generating a turtle, generate flag top. And we'll copy all this one more time except this is going to be for the flagpole and this is going to be items.getSprite33. Uh, they're in such different positions because I think they're just separate on the sprite sheet for some reason. But anyways, we will call this generate flagpole. And this should generate the flagpole. So let's go into our prefabs. I'm going to go ahead and copy our generate turtle function because it's going to be once again pretty similar to all this stuff. Uh, actually, instead of doing that too, let's copy the generate mushroom because it's going to be more similar to this one than it is to that. So we'll call this generate flag top. And this is going to get the item sprite sheet. And then we're going to have the flag top sprite, which is just going to be sprites at index six. And it's going to have the regular scale and everything. And then it's going to have a rigid body with fixed rotation, basically all the same stuff here. Uh, and then we're also going to not have a circle collider, but instead we're going to have a box collider. So box 2D collider, and I'll call this box collider. And this is going to be a new box collider. And we're going to set this size to a new vector 2F, 0.1F, 0.25F, which will give us a good size. And then we're going to set the offset because this block is somewhat offset. So we'll set it to minus uh, 0.075F and 0.0F and that should do everything for us and then we're just going to add the box collider instead of that and we're also going to be returning a flag top and we don't want mushroom AI instead what we want is what we will just call new flagpole and we're going to pass in true because this is basically going to tell us whether this is the flag top or the flagpole and then depending on which one it is you can give the player extra points for how high up he was or whatever you want to do. But anyways, that's how we'll do that. And then we're literally just going to copy this for the flag pull function. And it's going to be uh, pretty much exactly the same. Except we're going to be getting sprite 33. And we're going to be setting flag pull and say false because this is not the top of the flag pull. And I guess you could change this to say flag pull and everything. But we won't do that because it doesn't really matter too much. Then let's go in and create a new uh, component. We're going to call this flag pull. And this is going to extend component and it's going to be a very simple component too. And so we'll have a private boolean is top variable, which I'm going to set to false and we'll have a public flagpole boolean. And this is going to take in the is top variable. We'll say this dot is top equals is top just like that. And then we're going to override the collision method because that's all we really care about. We're going to override begin collision. And this takes in the game object, the colliding object, or I guess we could just call it OBJ. Uh, it takes in the contact, and it takes in the contact normal. And then once we have that, what we want to do is we just want to see if the player controller has collided with us. So we will go ahead and try and get the player controller component. So we'll say get component player controller dot class. And we'll say if player controller is not null, meaning we collide it with the player, then we'll just say player controller dot play win animation. And then all the logic is going to live inside of the player controller. 
and we will pass it our game object because that's how the player controller is going to know where to place the player's position. So before we start implementing that, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, run the completed code so that we can see what's supposed to happen. So once we do have the flagpoles in our game and working, what's going to happen is basically uh, when Mario hits any portion of the flagpole when he collides with any part, it's going to trigger the win animation until he slides and it's going to make him slide down. And then once he hits some sort of ground, he'll just walk forwards a certain length of time and everything. And you'll notice he also got died by the Goomba. I guess you could fix that in our code, but for me, it's fine. Anyways, so now that we know sort of what's supposed to happen, let's go ahead into the player controller so that we can go ahead and implement that do win animation. So we'll go ahead right above the begin collision method and we'll have a public void play win animation method. And this will take in a game object, which is the flagpole. And we'll say if not win play win animation, which we're going to go ahead and implement as a boolean. So we'll say create local variable uh, or not local variable, but we'll say create field and that should give us a boolean up here. And then we can just go ahead and add that all the way down here with the list of all of our other stuff. And we'll also have this be transient because we don't want to save that. So play win animation. And I guess we should also initialize that to false because that is what it should be in the beginning. Okay. So we'll say if it's not, if we haven't already triggered it, then we'll say play win animation equals true. We'll say velocity dot set to zero. And then we'll say acceleration dot set to zero. And we'll say RB dot set velocity to our velocity. We'll say RB dot set is sensor. We're going to turn our player into a sensor so that he doesn't really collide with anything anymore. And then we'll say RB dot set body type to body type dot static so that we can control him explicitly. And then we're going to say uh, game object dot transform dot position dot X equals flagpole dot transform dot position dot X. So we're basically going to move Mario directly onto the flagpole. And then finally, we're going to say asset pool dot get sound assets slash sounds slash flagpole dot OGG dot play, which will play the flagpole sliding noise. So this basically just sort of sets up our characters so that he will start uh, being the proper position. And then we trigger this flag. And what do we do if we want to play the wind animation? Well, like we just saw, we want Mario to basically slide down. And then once he hits the ground, he needs to start walking to the right for a certain length of time until he's done. Okay, so that's basically the goal. Let's go ahead and add a few more variables to help us out with that. So I'm going to move this play win animation just below this stuff. There we have a private transient float time to castle. So this is basically how much time he walks on the ground afterwards. And I'm going to set that to 4.5 seconds. Private transient float walk time, which equals 2.2 seconds. And then we're going to have a private. And so the walk time is how long he should be walking and the time to castle is how long until we stop playing the win animation. We're basically just done. And then we'll have a private transient sent event equals false, which we may or may not use. This was basically because I was using our event system to trigger uh, the end scene. So basically we would switch back to our level editor once we finish. So we may or may not use that. But how do we make Mario slide down? Well, we can basically just move his position down till he hits ground. And that's exactly what we'll do. We'll say if we're playing the win animation, then we're going to go into this whole thing and we're going to call check on ground. And so check on ground will still work because Mario still has his rigid body and it's just set to a sensor. So we'll still be able to tell when he hits the ground, which is good because we still want to be able to tell that so that we know when to start walking. Uh, I'm also going to return out of this afterwards because while we're playing the win animation, we can't let the player control him anymore. So this will just sort of short, short circuit our player controller. Then we'll say if we're not on the ground yet, we want to slide down. So we'll say game object dot transform dot scale dot X equals minus 0 0.25 F. So I flipped the scale so that he's facing to the left, but it turns out in the original Mario games, he doesn't actually do that. So I guess this isn't too important and you don't need to do that if you don't want to. Uh, but this is important, which is when we start moving him down. So we'll say uh, position minus equals DT. So we basically just start sliding down. We'll say state machine dot trigger stop running. So this should stop him from running or doing any sort of animation. And then we'll also do state machine dot trigger stop jumping because we want him to just be in a still pose. Then we'll say otherwise, if we're not on the ground, what do we do? Or I mean, otherwise, if we are on the ground, what do we do? 
Well, we can say if this dot walk time is greater than zero, which means we still need to be walking. Then we'll say game object dot transform dot position dot scale dot x equals 0 0.25 f. So we're gonna have them pointing to the right. Then we'll say game object dot transform dot position dot x plus equals dt. And then we'll say state machine dot trigger uh, start running. So we start playing our run animation, which should be good. So we'll just keep walking to the right while we need to be walking. Um, and then let's also go right here and we'll say time to cast minus equals dt and walk time minus equals dt, just that we're subtracting those when we need to be. And then we'll also say if we haven't started playing. So if not asset pool dot get sound assets slash sounds slash stage clear dot OGG dot is playing. So if the stage clear music isn't playing yet, then we're basically just going to start playing that. So we could say get sound assets slash sounds slash stage clear dot OGG dot play. And you can make a function that's like play if not playing or something like that, which would basically do the same thing. So then we're going to subtract our time to castle and walk time. And finally, we'll say if time to castle is less than or equal to zero, meaning and then we're done with our animation and we basically just want to get out of here. We'll do the same thing that we do when we die. And let's see what we do when we die very quickly. So basically when we die, we just say change scene and I'm just going to do the same thing. So we'll say uh, change scene, which should change our scene and everything. Um, and I'm going to get rid of this sent event flag, which we don't really need. Okay. And that should basically be it. Like if we're to run this now, we should be able to get a prefab. And then if we add this in here and we add a few flagpoles, then if we run into it, we should trigger the animation. So you'll notice Mario triggers the animation till he gets to the right point And then he stops walking. Um, and he also doesn't collide with anything except for the enemies, which we need to stop. And if we jump at the top, he slides down first and then he starts walking. But then he basically just continues on until he finishes. And let's go ahead and also too, uh, just so that our enemies don't kill us when we're already winning. Um, if we go down here to where we check to see if we're hurt invincible uh, or if we're dead. So right here, we can basically just check and see if the heart invincibility time is greater than zero or if we're playing the win animation. So that should basically just sort of short circuit our enemies. And if we're in the win animation, they should not be able to hurt us. So now if we do this, we should be fine. But we're not. So it looks like I got to figure out one more thing to fix that real quickly. Oh, and it looks like we just need to add it to our is invincible flag as well. So we'll basically just add it right down here too. So we'll say and uh, or or play win animation. And this should basically just make sure that both of our enemies will not hurt us if we're in our win state. Okay, so if we run this one more time, we should be able to just slide down and we'll just run past our enemies and we'll go to a certain point. So what this means now is that you can basically go ahead and you can set up your flag at the end of your stage, wherever you want that to be. So I'll go ahead and just create a end of stage area very quickly. All right, so I've just gone ahead and created a little bit of a win part and I've adjusted the Z indices so that Mario should look like he's walking into the uh, castle. So basically if we just run to this flagpole and we hit it, he slides down and then he walks into the castle and he stops and you know, you finish your music up and everything. Uh, and it should transition us back to this level editor scene, but it's not too big of a deal. I don't really mind if you don't go back to the level editor. Oh, and it's not changing us back to the editor scene because uh, I changed us back to the original scene, right? Yeah, so we could just change this to level editor scene initializer and now we should be taken back to the level editor scene when we finish. Okay, so if I run this one more time, then we should see <laughs> that our game is pretty buggy, but we should also see that this works correctly when we hit this flagpole. So we hit the flagpole, it plays the flagpole sound, we stop, and then we get changed back to the level editor scene, which we do. Uh, it looks like we're still playing, which isn't good, so you could fix that up just by making sure that when we change scenes, we set is playing to false. And it also looks like we got our weird bugs back with our grid, so... Uh, yeah, it looks like we're just running out of room there, which you can fix really easily. Once again, I don't know why I have these set to such a low value, but basically we can fix that by just increasing the max lines size to like 5,000 if you want. And that should be good.
And so then if we do this one more time, yeah, you'll see that we don't run out of room. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, you could also do it where basically if like you zoom out past a certain level, you just don't draw the grid, which should accomplish the same thing. But this is pretty much Mario. Like we've got it mostly done. We do still have to add fireballs, but I don't think that's too important to do right now. I'm going to save that for the next episode where we'll basically add fireballs and then we'll fix up all of these weird bugs to the best that we can so that it basically plays pretty similarly to how Mario should play. And then I'll finish it off by building the first level of Mario and we'll have a completed game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode where we basically finish this up. Thanks.